405. And number 405, the banner of the cross. <laughs> Hymn number 192, ring the bells of heaven. receive our tithes and offerings and I thought one more thought on that on that video and some of you about my age you remember that one voice is uh, very distinctive J JFK I remember we played this one record and he would say ask not what your country can do for you 
but what you can do for your country. And I thought, you know, a lot of these things that we uh, talk about with veterans and in the Army of the United States, we can think about as the children of God and in the Christian Army and make application in our own lives there. So let's give to the Lord as he lays upon our hearts this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Tony Monk if he would to please word our prayer. I sing this song every year, and uh, this year I'm sorry that I can't sing it, but some of y'all might be glad, but uh, I'm kind of sad, but so Kathleen's going to try to sing it this morning, and uh, Fallen But Not Forgotten, and it's, uh, you know, veteran, it's our only song that we sing that's actually Veterans Day, so I didn't, I didn't want to leave it out, uh, but uh, we'll do that, and then she has one more. Uh, the Statue of Liberty, so we'll do those two songs. watch about uh, veterans and uh, and uh, different wars and patriotic things it uh, stirs my heart and of course I'd, I was never in the the military uh, but my dad was in the Air Force and he served over uh, during the time of the Vietnam War and uh, he he wasn't uh, fortunately he was didn't have to go out in any uh, front lines or anything like that uh, but still you know, anyone serving during the wartime is, is still respectable, and, and anyone serving any time is still respectable and commendable that they give their their freedoms and their life to, to protect us. So we're thankful for that. i 
beside his daddy and watch the soldiers marching by. It was Veterans Day and he wondered why there were tears in daddy's eyes. And later they laid flowers beside a monument of stone. He said, son, my daddy went to fight and didn't make it home. With honor and glory, 
Yeah, thank you, Living Proof, and thank you, Kathleen. What is beautiful music there. Thank God for the liberty that we have as Americans. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Well, thank God for that liberty. And then just, again, looking at both freedoms, the freedoms that we have as American, and, and we're, so, we're so blessed sometimes we just can't even imagine all of it. We just need to be a, a thankful people. So uh, it sure is a blessing to have Brother Ed Bossel and his wife Ruby with us. And uh, they have been on, he, he was telling me they've been there for 46 years. Well, I tell you, that that is a blessing. I, I thank God for his faithfulness and his love for those people. I asked him right before the message if he'd come give us a quick update and a testimony. So why don't you come? Thank you. It's always good to be back to Emmanuel. Your open love and warm welcomes, it's, a, it's an upper. And... Uh, God's really blessed, and thank you for your effectual prayers. Uh, Joyce, uh, those of you who came up there, you probably remember her. She was the lady where we helped her dedicate uh, the gravestone for her mother. And uh, she'd been in our church at that time for seven years, battling alcohol, fall, stand, fall, stand. Ever since you folks has been there, she's been sober. And... Uh, just really growing like crazy, burden for others. She put signs up. We we were giving out uh, open house one day, hot dogs and things. Uh, Joyce put all the signs up. She sent her warmest uh, love and appreciation for you all and, and the impact you had on her life. Uh, God is working up there. We've got one lady and uh, a man. Now, she asked me if I could come and share with, uh, her grandchildren what I had shared with her she'd been saved didn't get into church called me here after a couple of weeks and she said can we have a Bible study I would like to learn the Bible as good as my husband who'd been in the first church we started and I thought glory to God that's that's what you want is open doors well we just had the 105th Saturday evening Bible study with them on 104. Now, uh, Leon, Liana, she has Sundance scars up and down both arms where she's been pierced, had a skewer run through there, hooked to a leather uh, strip that's hooked to the tree that they call and pray for deliverance for the people. And uh, on... Bible study 104, she said, I don't go to the sweat lodge anymore, and I don't go to sun dances. Oh, glory to God. He's, what goes on up there don't happen overnight. We've got another young man. His name's Dale Ponyhorse, and you got to meet him when, when you were up there. But uh, in the last year, he's just come on fire for the Lord. I mean on fire for the Lord. He's uptown walking and witnessing the street people. He doesn't have a car, but this morning, then last Sunday, he walked four miles to preach the word of God. And so that's your prayers. And uh, it doesn't happen without your prayers and your sacrifices that make it possible that we can be up there. Uh, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And they would set in the region in shadow of death, light is sprung up. So you pray. We're As old as I am, I'm still praying for a great awakening among the whole people. You, you think you could do that? I know I can't do that, but I know God can. With God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. What a blessing and. Boy, we get to be a part. We get to pray. We get to read the missions letters. Get to hear him. Well, we get to, that's what I love about independent fundamental Bible believing Baptists, that we get to see our missionaries face to face and get to fellowship with them and, and talk with them and get to hear what God's doing in their lives. We'll continue to pray for you, Brother Ed. Thank you and Sister Ruby for being here with us this morning. Again, all the other visitors that are here today, our get you are our guest, and we're so thankful that you're with us. Look with me in the Word of God this morning, Exodus chapter 3. And 
This, this message this morning, in these first 14 verses of this chapter, will be a closer look. And we will look at Moses and his calling and see that it's been a long time. You know, we, we see it, there was none that knew Joseph there after Joseph went off the scene. And how that there was a time before God reached out. The nation of Israel is now in Egyptian bondage there and God's looking for a man and this man is found out on the back side of the desert in Midian uh, as a shepherd. And, well, just where God finds us many times in our lives and he calls us unto salvation or he calls us into service and, and how that God's not looking for the equipped. God, God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. We see that Moses, that he had a lot of excuses about being slow of speech and, and he said, who am I? And, you know, that, that, that ought to be an initial response uh, uh, to any of us. <laughs> Who am I that a king should bleed and die for? Who am I that he should pray, not my will, thine, Lord? The answer, I may never know why he ever loved me so, but I'm thankful that to an old rugged cross he would go for you, for me, and for the world, that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to Calvary and that he was willing to go and uh, chapter 3 here, we see in verses 1 through 14 this morning. Let's read the passage and then let's look at some things that God has for us here. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that, he, that, he turned aside to see. There it is right there, a closer look. I mean, he's, he's focused upon those sheep, and as a shepherd there in the desert, and yet God gets his attention and he, he wants a closer look. Uh, he, he's saying that this is, this is something like I have never seen before. There's a bush that is on fire and yet it is not burned. And it's a, we see that it's a pre-incarnate Christ there. It's a theophany. It's a presence of God, of Jehovah, uh, who is the self-existence God, the creator of the universe, uh, manifesting himself and making himself known uh, to Moses there in the desert. And, and boy, never, uh, never minimize that God loves little people, little places, and little things. And that, they're that they are important to, unto him. And, and Moses is there. He sees this bush that's ablaze. And the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 29, for our God is a consuming fire. And may I say I've learned because of the grace of God, not anything of myself or my own that is better to be consumed with him than to be consumed by him. Amen. And that it, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Uh, to, to be dead in your trespasses and sins and, and to die and to take your last breath and spend eternity in a hell that you could have escaped because of God's love and mercy that were made known to you. The gospel was preached, the good news that he died, that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day and that he's at the right hand of God. And Hebrews says in 725, Wherefore he is able also to save unto the uttermost those that come unto God by him. It's the only way that you can come to God, that you can know him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside. Oh, I pray this morning. There were times in my life I looked back before at the age of 26 that I repented of my sins and asked God to have mercy upon my eternal soul and he forgave my sins and he, and he saved my soul and he transformed my life by the grace of God. And yes, he's still working on me and he will be until the day I take my last breath or until the trumpet of God sounds and I get my glorified bodies. But there were times that I, that I would take a glimpse. I was raised in a Christian home uh, 
Uh, my, my mom and, and my stepdad uh, were married there at, at the age of seven years old. And just a month later, my, my stepdad was gloriously saved. And whenever I say he was saved, uh, I, he was saved. You saw it in his life. There were evidences. There were birthmarks. And, I mean, we were in the house of God every time that the doors uh, uh, were opened. Uh, and we, that he had a desire for the things of God and wanted to serve God and to worship God. And I grew up... Uh, with, with such a blessing to be a part of a home like that. And yet there came a time in, in those rebellious teenage years uh, uh, to where I turned from God and against the things that I had heard and, and that I had seen in my parents and, and how that there was a hatred of God, a hatred of people, a hatred of everything around me until God finally, it no, there was no longer just a glimpse or a glance. And I'll tell you how deceiving Satan is is that I joined a Baptist church, Central Baptist Church in Burt Burnett, Texas, and was lost and on my way to hell. This church can't save you. This baptistry can't save you. This communion table can't save you. Good works can't save you. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a gift. A gift must be received, and it must be received with the heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm glad that it, a glimpse and a glance that God finally got my attention one day, and that I saw a different fire. I saw the fires of hell in my destiny and my future because of the wickedness within me, because of my sin against a holy and a just God. And I knew that the only hope that I had was to go to the cross, was to go to Calvary and to be washed in the blood of the Lamb and thank God that His goodness led me to repentance, that His grace saved me and that His greatness has kept me unto this day and that I will never perish. But this fire here, Moses, I believe, uh, as a man of God here, he sees this fire and it's a, it's a different type of fire. It's not consumed the bush is not consumed. Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt? And when the Lord saw that, he turned aside to see. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. How many times in the Bible? <laughs> here am I. Send me. We think of Isaiah, how he saw the Lord high and lifted up and how his train filled the temple. And he said, woe is unto me. And then he answered the call of God after he said, he said, woe is me before he says, here am I, send me. My friend, we, no man becomes blessed until he first realizes that he is wretched. If the apostle Paul can say, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord, that Moses... He sees this bush, and, and he's not going to saunter over there. He's not going to stroll over there. He's not going to strut over there. He's going to end up uh, uh, realizing that he is in the presence of a holy and a just God. And if there's one thing that we need today, it's an old-fashioned revival of reverence for those things which are holy, for the Word of God, for the house of God, for the work of God and the things of God today. It's good enough for Moses, if it's good enough for Joshua, whenever he sees the captain of the host, it's good enough for me. That whole time religion, it's good enough for me. And I'm not talking about church membership either. I'm talking about repentance and faith, being born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb. When the Lord saw, he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither. He said, all right, this is a contradiction, Brother Harris. You said Jehovah was a self-existent, eternal God, continually revealing himself and making himself known, and that he created, he spoke this world into existence, and, and how that uh, the psalmist cried out, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. When I consider thy hands, the work of thy hands and of thy fingers, and he cried out how marvelous and excellent that God was in that great psalm. Chapter, go read that sometime in chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. That same God is telling him, he said, Draw not nigh thither. Why? He said, Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. 
You remember when they came into the tabernacle, when they came into the temple, when they went into the holy place, before they could, they could not enter the holy of holies to where the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat were, except for one thing. They had to have the blood. They had to have the blood that was from that altar. My friend, the only way that we can draw nigh unto God is to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, thank God for His precious, redeeming blood. He said, moreover, He said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Remember, Moses is the lawgiver. He's going up into the mount. By God's grace, at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I spurned. Till my guilty so imploring turned to Calvary. The fear of God that leads us to a faith in God, that leads us to be in fellowship with God, to have the presence of His Holy Spirit and, and that still small voice and to be able uh, to read His Word and for the author of that book that abides within us to make it known of the promises of God. He said, here am I. And he tells him to put off his shoes. You know, it's interesting enough that Joshua was Moses', that he, that he was his successor there and that the same thing happened unto him before they went into Jericho. Go read Joshua chapter 5 one time and, and how the captain of the host was there and he wasn't there to help, he was there to take over. He was there to lead. And, and how that Joshua had to get his shoes off because he was standing on holy ground. Oh, that we would have a, a reverence today for the things of God. We've lost our fear of God in this nation. We've lost the fear of God in this world. And I'm not talking about that fear of waiting for God to strike us down, but I'm talking about having a reverence and a respect for the things of God. He said, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And, and Moses hides his face. We've read that verse. And in verse number 7, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. There was a reason. Now, this wasn't just some type of spectacle or sideshow or something over here. God had a reason uh, for getting Moses' attention because he wants to use Moses. Uh, he wants to speak to Moses. Uh, he wants Moses. He's going to be the lawgiver. The Bible says in John 1.17, The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It's that law. It's the Word of God, that, uh, that sharp two-edged sword that convicts us and shows us our sin and shows us our need for salvation and leads us to the Lord Jesus Christ. He sees the afflictions of His people. He said, For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, under the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Well, that's a lot of ites right there, but they're still around today with different names and, and enemies of God's people and of the cross and their obstacles, but again, only opportunities for God to show His power and His grace and His ability. They're going, to have to, they're going to have to cross across that swelling Jordan. They're going to have to go against those that, that outnumber them, that overpower them. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible tells us that in 1 John 4, verse number 4. Moses, he, he sees the bush and, he, and God tells him. He said, I, I've heard the cries of, of my people there. And I see that they're in bondage there. And he said, verse number 10, Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And here we see the humility. You respect the humility of Moses. In fact, there was one other quality that Moses had that, that God said in his word that he had more than any man that ever walked the face of this earth, that he was a meek man, his meekness. And yet I've, I've shared with you before, and, and some of us have experienced it personally and in our own lives, that an unguarded strength can become a double weakness. 
Moses was the meekest of men above all the face of the earth, and yet why was he not able to go into the promised land? Because he struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock that second time when God told him to. The importance of obedience unto God and having on the whole armor of God and realizing that Satan will do everything. He knows our strengths, but he knows our weaknesses too. Moses, this great man of God, he says, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Just like Brother Ed was saying, Brother Bossel was saying just a while ago. He, he was saying, I can't, uh, uh, but God can. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. With God all things are possible, and with Him nothing shall be impossible. That's exactly what He told Mary about the virgin birth. And how shall these things be, seeing I know not a man? And yet we rejoice at the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the seed of the Holy Ghost, not the seed of Adam, but that second Adam that many of us know personally this day. We continue to read this morning. He said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say? unto them and God said unto Moses I am that I am we think of the great I am's in the gospels there of the Lord Jesus Christ and how that Jesus himself said your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day he was speaking to the religious people there he said before Abraham was I am the eternal a Jehovah, the self-existent God, the creator and the sustainer of this universe, the one that has given us the breath of life and every heartbeat and the pulse within our bodies and the physical life, but offers us eternal life for our souls, created in his image, body, spirit, and soul. And the soul is either going to die eternally or it's going to live eternally. Again, the words of Dr. Norris, the word, the soul that never lives, never dies. It's eternal death or eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thy I am, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. We think of our God this morning. There's none like him. He said before Abraham was I am. What did he tell Jeremiah? He said before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Well, that kind of blows away abortion right there, doesn't it? And shows you how much that, a murder that it is. You go and study Psalm 139. I heard Brother Chris teaching that in Sunday school there. And within the womb and how in the very uh, Hebrew it speaks of embryo and, and how the, uh, there's life within the, uh, the womb. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Even before we were a thought in our parents' eyes. And then Hebrews 11.3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Kind of blows away uh, right there, evolution right there. That there was this blob that came into existence and millions and millions of years ago, ago and, and eons and eons ago. Instead of what God's word tells us, uh, that, that he created them, that he spoke them into existence. That's the big bang theory. God spoke and bang, it happened. Of things which do appear. He's the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, even before a creation. Oh, Hebrews tells us so much about the eternal uh, God. Micah writes about the eternal God. As we see, he says before, he, he talks about being the great uh, I am. And, and, and Micah chapter 7, verse number 18. I love what Micah says at the end of this book. He says, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depths 
of the sea. Thank God for the great I am this morning and to be called a child of God. He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the vine. And on and on we could look the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. Like the, the black preacher said years ago whenever he was preaching about Goliath's sword that David had got whenever he was on the run, he said, there's none like that. Give it to me. The black preacher said, there ain't nobody like him. My friend, there ain't nobody like my Jesus this morning. Nobody like my God who is able, who is willing. And, and, and he'll reach down not only to the uttermost but to the guttermost and, and lift us up out of the horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set our feet upon a rock and establish our goings. And, and after we, as we become a child of God or entrusted in his care, how that whenever we are in bondage, whenever we are in trouble, that we can cast all our care upon him for he cares for us. How that he heard the cries of, of, the, of the children of Israel. You think he doesn't hear the cries of the nation of Israel today with the hatred, with the attacks, and with the assault? And yet the word of God is still true that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. He'll bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. Oh, the love that we should have for God's chosen people. The great I am. He says, that's what you need to tell them. He said, I am that I am. And he said, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. You know, you think about where God found some other whenever he called them. We think about the shepherds whenever we get close to Christmas. What were the shepherds doing? They were keeping their flocks there in Bethlehem. And when you do a really uh, deep study of that, that they were watching over those flocks of many of those lambs that were to be sacrificial lambs loosed, used in those offerings uh, at the temple there and how that they all pointed toward the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ going to Calvary and suffering and bleeding and dying on an old rugged cross. The shepherds were keeping their flocks when they received the news of our Savior's birth. We think of Gideon and how he was threshing wheat behind the wine press to, out of fear when God came to him and said, Thou mighty man of valor. And boy, you could get real comical about just thinking about that. He said, I thought I was the only one here because I know he's not talking about me. Gideon was afraid. I believe that Moses was afraid. I believe that throughout the word of God that coming into God's presence is not something that you just do with a smirk on your face or a smile. That it's something that it humbles you and it brings you in fear before the face of God and, and that, that it's a blessing afterwards but we come into his presence. Get off our shoes. Uh, we think of in certain parts of the world, uh, in Oriental, it's a custom that you go into certain homes or things and get your shoes off there at the door. And, and how that it ought to be that way, that we get the filth, that we come to God's house, that we come prayed up and, and that we come clean with God and we come expecting the blessings and, and into his presence with worship and praise and with thanksgiving and to prepare our hearts to come into the presence of the king. That means I may not have to take my shoes off at the door. It means I need to get rid of the sin that's in my life because you get to walking through the mud, you get to walking through the, the devil's mud puddles and all the dirt and all the filth and the things of this world. You see, we still live in a sin-cursed world in tabernacles of flesh. And we're going to have to deal with sin until the day we die, but praise God that our, our sins have passed present and future are under the blood and Micah said that they're in the depths of the sea that God has forgotten about those things but it's a matter of how that we walk in this present world that we walk circumspectly that we walk cleanly that we walk in reverence and in holiness and, and that we present our bodies living sacrifices wholly acceptable unto God which is our reasonable service for when Moses turned aside things began you think of Moses' life and how his life was one. He was 120 years old when he died. And no man knows where Moses' body's at. The Bible tells us that. You say, well, they think they discovered. No, they didn't. I, I, I believe God's word. And the Bible tells us that his life was in three divisions of 40. He was a prince. He grew up in the, in the house of Pharaoh. And then he was a shepherd for 40 years. And on the back 
side of the desert. God speaks to him there at the burning bush. And, and in those last 40 years, he leads the nation of Israel by God's power. God places the rod in his hands, and it's all about uh, whose hands uh, that it's in. I've heard a lot of illustrations about that, about professional athletes. And if I hold a baseball, it's meaningless. But if it's in Nolan Ryan's hands, that's equivalent to over 5,000 strikeouts. You think about a basketball in, in my hands, that's a joke. But you put it in somebody like Michael Jordan's hands, and, and man, I know I'm going right way back and, and dating myself, but you think of some great... It depends upon whose hands it's in. But you put your hand in the hand of the man that stilled the water and stilled and calmed the sea and spoke this world into existence and you let him place a rod in your hand, the word of God in your heart and the Holy Spirit of God in every tool that you need to be successful to be a victorious child of God. And my friend, you're going to succeed because it's not going to be by your power, by your might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And then it needs to be for his glory. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Oh, we think of Moses' life and we think of our lives. And I've, I've always broken, tried to break that down in as many ways as I can and looking at our lives as a book and, and how that it's written. Thank God for Brother Ed for 46 years upon the reservation. But I know that he would agree with me today. Some men's lives were, were a sentence we think of William Borden and David Brainerd and John Birch and men who never reached their 30th birthday and their, their tenure of service. We think of those as we think of veterans today there on D-Day in, in, in June of 1944 who never made it off of the boats and how that uh, Omaha Beach and how that the seas became blood because of their service and their sacrifice. And yet we still honor them today even though they're... Service was a, such a short time. We think this morning of these men that God, in, in the word of God, men and women alike uh, throughout the ages that God has used uh, in his army. And maybe we didn't see the burning bush, but maybe it was like it was on the road to Emmaus where those disciples said, did not our hearts burn within us? It's a different type of fire. It's a fire that's within a fire that God created, a fire that the devil wants to put out. And I've always said this, but, you know, I, I believe in the doctrine of eternal security and that we'll never perish. Uh, the, pilot, the pilot light, I mean, the burners may get clogged up from time to time, but the pilot light's never going to go out. I believe once saved, always saved. And that thank God that he can restore that, that he can cleanse us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember that Moses, uh, uh, that, that he murders a man uh, uh, in, a, in a strife and in a quarrel and how that David, uh, how that he committed adultery and murdered uh, the, uh, the lady Bathsheba's husband. And how that God can forgive us of our sins. How he can cleanse us. And that whenever he cleanses us, he can fill us. And that he can use us for his glory. Amen. Oh, you think about how that God used Moses in such a great way. The lawgiver in the mountains. All that he endured. We think of the disciples. Where did he find the disciples? He found them in Mark chapter 1 verse 16 through 20 on the Sea of Galilee. How he finds Andrew and Simon fishing. And what does it tell us in that passage? It tells us that they forsook their nets and followed him. What does it tell us about John and James? They went a step further. Not only did they forsook, uh, forsake their nets, they forsook their father Zebedee and left him in the boat and followed Jesus and became fishers of men instead of fishers of fish. Oh, when Jesus walks by this morning, will you turn aside when the Holy Spirit of God knocks upon your heart's door and shows you that you need to be saved, that you've never been born again, and He brings conviction to your heart. My friend, He does that not to condemn you. He does that because He loves you, and He's trying to lead you to repentance. He's trying to get you to forsake your sin. My friend, you can't come to the Lord Jesus Christ and have faith and trust in Him and be born again until you turn from your sins. Repentance and faith. And we, we're never going to be able to serve God totally until we forsake all to follow Him. 
we're going to have to forsake those nets. As Paul told young Timothy, In your hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I think we see some choosing right here. We think of the draft and how it's sent out, and men answer that draft honorably and serve, and some sacrifice, and then some dishonorably run from that. We called them draft dodgers years ago. Those that burn the flag, those that, that would not go and to fight for freedom and for their country. My friend, we see that many of God's troops today and His infantry and His, His children, men and women, have gone AWOL and how that we need to come back to God. We've got to get America back to God. And judgment must begin at the house of God. It must begin with me. It must begin with you. And we must trust God. We must come back uh, to Him. James 4, 8 says, Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And how God wants us to draw nigh, but we have to do it through the blood. There has to be genuine repentance. We have to forsake some things in our life. And we see that Moses, he's going to follow the leadership of God here at the burning bush there. He's going to turn aside. Oh, I pray this morning that you turn aside this morning and hear not the words of this preacher. My words are nothing. It's this word that we want right here. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hear the word of God. Hear the Holy Spirit of God knock at your heart's door this morning telling that you need to be saved and how that God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance, uh, that all would leave their sins and, and come to Christ and to be washed in His redeeming blood and to know the forgiveness of their sins, to know the fellowship with their Creator as their blessed Redeemer. Oh, what a blessing to know that. This morning, John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And as I've said countless times, Jesus didn't lay down his life for friends. He laid down his life for sinners. Oh, we're friends once we by faith come to him. Abraham was called the friend of God. He believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And Abraham was called the friend of God. Capital F, the title for Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. The blood brought my freedom. Someone had to die. As Kathleen sings about, someone freely took our place. Well, I'm glad that, that, that Jesus took my place. And I'm glad that there's been some times in my life that I, I may not have seen a burning bush, but there was a fire going on within me that I couldn't explain. One that I didn't create, but one once it burned. Once it burned, I wanted to keep feeding that fire. There was nothing like it. There was nothing like it to be in the presence of God to be filled with His Spirit, to, uh, to have such a strong love for this Word, to want to read it, to want to, to obey it, to want to meditate upon it, to study it, and to share it with others. That's nothing uh, by the first birth. That can only be as we are born again. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. What's your story? There's a lot today Say, this is my story. And, you know, everyone loves a good story, but, my friend, it better include Jesus. Amen. Oh, my friend, without Jesus, there's something missing. I said that our lives were sometimes like uh, maybe a, a period, a, an exclamation mark, maybe a sentence, maybe a paragraph, maybe a chapter. And some people's lives are volumes. They spend all of their, their lives in, in, in one place. And some lives last longer than others. And yet the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. Oh, I pray that God speaks to your heart this morning. If you're without Christ, that you would, that you would see him and him alone. Because he's the only answer. I, I close with this illustration. This speaks of, uh, it's told of one of the generals of Cyrus, the great king of Persia, 
One of his generals came home from a campaign and was shocked to find that in his absence his own wife had been arrested and was languishing in prison, charged with treachery against her country. And the trial was to be held that very day. The general hastened to the court of Cyrus, and the guards brought in his own beloved wife. She, the poor woman, pale and anxious, tried to answer the charges brought against her, but all to no avail. Her husband, standing near, heard the stern voice of the Persian ruler pronounce the death sentence. In a moment, as they were about to drag her away to behead her, the Bible, it says he ran forward and threw himself down at the feet of the emperor. O oh, sire, he cried, not she, but me. Let me give my life for hers. Put me to death, but spare my wife. And as Cyrus looked upon him, he was so touched by his deep devotion and his love for his wife that his heart was softened. He remembered, too, how faithful this servant had been, and he gave the command that the wife should go free. She was fully pardoned. As her husband led her out of the room, he said to her, Did you notice the kind look in the eyes of the emperor as he pronounced the word of pardon? She said, I did not see the face of the emperor. The only face that I could see was that of the man who was willing to die for me. Oh, when we get home, when we see the face of the man who died for us, how our hearts will praise him. I saw Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Mark, Luke, and Timothy. But boy, do I ever want to see Jesus, the one who died for me. He died for you. He died for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever will, some of the sweetest words I've ever heard. There's not a one of us in this life that are going to go through it without times of rejection in our life. And, and yet he included me. He included you. I am so happy in Christ today that I go singing along my way. Yes, I'm so happy to know and say, Jesus included me too. Oh, you may not see a burning bush this morning, but I pray there's a different type of fire this morning. Thank God that Moses answered that call, that he took a closer look, that he got a clearer understanding of what was going on, and that it was all because of his consideration of the fact of how it burned and was not consumed. The Bible says, Come now, let us reason together, thus saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Oh, God loves you this morning. He's willing to forgive your sins. He'll save your soul. He'll give you that gift of eternal life. Child of God, don't forget, it's not in the abundance of the things that we possess in this world, but that abundant life. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The abundant life, uh, the life, uh, uh, again, as I've mentioned before, uh, how blessed we are, that we have the breadth of life, we have the gift of eternal life, uh, we have the hope of abundant life and the grace of God in our lives that's been manifest. Oh, my friend, uh, turn aside tomorrow morning. Oh, don't, make, don't just give God your attention on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night. My friend, let him... Rule and reign your life. Let him be the Lord of your life. Let him sit upon the throne of your heart. Let him be in control. Uh, add to that fire of the Holy Spirit of God living within you today. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, so much this morning. Lord, for your precious word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the life of Moses. And Lord, as we learn from his life, how he turned aside. And Lord, how you blessed his life. How he... You used him in a mighty way. We pray, Lord, for that one here today that's, that's not saved. Nor, Lord, they've never repented of their sins and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Lord, help them to receive that gift of eternal life before it's eternally too late. Lord, help us as your children, Lord, not to be so distracted, not to be so entangled, not to be so caught up in the affairs of this life, Lord, that we can't worship and serve you and share you with others. Lord, use our lives, we pray. Lord, help us to lay our all upon the altar this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand this morning. No one ever cared for me like Jesus.
What a blessing this morning if we have family, if we have friends, if we have those that loved us. What a blessing to be an American this morning and know that there were those that loved our country, our flag, our constitution that were willing to serve, to sacrifice. And some gave all. What a blessing for us to be able to show that love back to Him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and that He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. We love Him because He first loved us. He loves you this morning, sinner friend. He wants you to be saved. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come. Would you come today? Come and drink of the water of life freely. Come and trust Christ today. He'll forgive your sins. He'll save your soul. Oh, how much He cares for me. Oh, how much He cares for you. Amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Visitors, once again, and Brother Ed, Miss Ruby, thank you so much for being here uh, today. It was good to have all of our visitors. We're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. Okay, meet with Brother Benjamin if you'd like to go out with him and the youth uh, this afternoon, and he'll be back there to meet you, and we'll be in prayer for them that God would give them good contacts and let's uh, continue to pray for those uh, on our prayer list and those that are dealing with, with so many difficulties so let's be dismissed in a word of prayer choir practice at 445 our prayer meetings at 530 men and ladies and we invite you all to come back tonight let's be dismissed can I ask brother Greg Stockton if he would to please dismiss us in prayer